Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to a preview build for a game called Earthless. This is a new roguelike deck builder game that actually reminds me a lot of Slay the Spire, but obviously with a sci-fi theme, and tactics and positioning do matter just a bit more. It's actually a really promising game that was recently featured during the Steam Next Fest, and I think it should be on y'all's radar. So let's go ahead and jump into a new game, and I'll show you how this is going to work. The story of this game is actually pretty interesting. Our sun was supposed to last for several billion more years before it eventually got too old and died. However, for reasons that have not yet been disclosed, our sun is going kaput, and all of humanity quickly hops onto whatever ship they can find and is beelining it away from Earth in all possible directions. We are one of those ships in search of a new home. We think we found a suitable planet, but now we have to get there. Now this is the main map, and this actually is very similar to something like Slay the Spire, where you have lots of different branching paths and encounters that ultimately are going to lead toward an end goal. So what I would do over here, for example, is start off with this encounter. Once completed, I can choose to either move to a salvage point of interest, or a communication transmission, or additional encounters, and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and jump into a basic encounter. And this is the tactical map. This represents our ship, and this is an alien life form that is going to try to stop us from reaching the end destination over here. Generally speaking, your goal is to simply reach the exit however you need to. So what I can do with this ship is I can click on it and then decide to move several different tiles. You can move up to four tiles in a single turn, depending on how much heat you are willing to expend. Every tile is gonna build up your engine's heat. So if I move two over here, for example, what you'll see over on the left is two bars of heat. Now at the end of your turn, you only burn away one bar of heat. So if you move as much as you're able to in this round, it means that next time, you're not gonna have nearly as much heat to work with to maneuver around, which means you could be at the mercy of your opponent. So there's always a trade-off you have to be concerned about. In the bottom area over here, you can see we have a bunch of different cards that represent the different actions available. Some of these cards are going to vent some of the extra heat and that can give you some maneuverability. But of course, to do other things too. We can apply vulnerable and marked to an opponent. We can do some damage. We can put up some defensive shields. For example, this asteroid is in my way. I'm gonna go ahead and use a missile to blow this sucker up. Go boom, all right? Now what that just did is it cost me one of four energy that is available over here on the left. You do regenerate all your energy at the beginning of your next turn, so there's really not a lot of harm, usually, in spending as much energy as possible. So can I possibly apply a mark on this guy? No, he's too far away, we're not gonna worry about that. I'm instead gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of shields in case he moves toward me, and then I'm gonna end my turn. That vents one heat, and my opponent could move if they chose to, but I don't think we're technically in their range. Let's go ahead and move as far forward as I can, spending all of my remaining heat going up to the maximum. This doesn't yet put me in range to fire off my missiles, unfortunately, but what we can do is now vent some heat so I can move next turn. I'll go ahead and draw a couple of cards just in case we get something useful. I got a target lock. I'll take that. Let's discard the missile launch here, apply vulnerable for next turn, and then I'm gonna spend the rest of my energy applying some shields to make sure I don't take any damage. They're gonna move forward and take a shot at me, but I'm fine. My shields now go away. We start our next turn. Let's go ahead and do some return damage since they're in range. And now our opponent has gone down. I'll go ahead and move forward one over here, vent a bit more heat, and now we're able to move all the way to the end, and that completes the encounter. As a reward, we get some cards to choose from. Let's see, we go for every three times you shield, we gain an overshield. We could gain some shield and then do damage to all units in a very short range, or we could go for cluster missile launch. Six random tiles will take six damage next turn which is very interesting, but probably not very reliable. I'm actually gonna take the defensive salvo because if I'm able to get close to a bunch of enemies to use this, I'm probably gonna wish that I had some shields as well. We also have ways of trying to boost up some of these cards to make them more powerful, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let's see, do we wanna to go to a transmission or do we want to go to a point of interest now? Um, I think we will go to a point of interest for fun. Let's see what this is gonna have for us. 
So here we can see that our gunnery officer, and we actually do have five different random characters who join our crew, has detected some Lusk Pearls, whatever those are. They want to research them to boost their abilities. The science officer also wants to take a look to go for medical advancement. Do we improve our combat capabilities or do we boost up our medical capabilities? And you can see who this affects over on the right as far as morale for different crew members. I'm going to boost up combat capabilities, which is going to make my engineer, gunnery, and navigation officer happy, but upset the science officer. That is something you have to worry about, though, is morale. Anyway, so that's now taken care of. We got a new card called Serrated Rounds. If we want to, we can take a look at our deck. I'll hop over here to a crafting and recycling area. And here we can see what cards we currently have available. So there's our vent heat, some shields. We have our missile launches, target lock, serrated rounds. Every time you deal damage to a target, you can deal two more. So this is a power up that's gonna make us stronger for the rest of combat. So let's go ahead and pick up the next encounter. It is the only option for us anyway. We'll jump into this. Now, of course, it's all procedurally generated, so it's random what you're going to run into. In this case, we have three different enemies, all of which are able to move independently. Now, if you hover over these enemies, you can see what they're probably going to do as of next turn. So this person is going to run forward and then do some damage to me, and uh, if I don't have any shields up, we're probably going to take a lot of pain. This character is also going to move forward, so we should think about how closely do we want to get to our opponents and risk taking any damage. If I move right here, we would probably get hit. But what I can do is try jumping forward to like this. Then we can do some damage right here. That hits their shield and does some hull damage. Then do a missile launch like so. Take that character down. This guy now is going to move forward and hit us. These guys would too. So what I can then do is back up a little bit. We're going in. And they should not be able to hit me this turn. Let's go ahead and vent out our heat. And I don't think anyone's in range for a target lock. So we're just going to have to accept moving on to the next turn. All right, that worked out fine. Now these guys, of course, are going to again move forward and do some damage. If I use two shields, we should be safe. So I'm going to take a bit of a risk and jump forward Taking over position. here. We're going to go ahead and start hitting these guys. And as long as we put up some shields, I think we're going to be fine. Let's draw some cards in case I can get something else that would be useful. I did not. Let's go ahead and drop the captain's orders. I don't have enough energy anyway. We'll vent the heat so I can maneuver next turn and then end. All right. Slow and steady wins the race here. It doesn't matter that they're shooting at me as long as I don't take any damage. Now, something I could do is run forward right along here, and we can use our new defensive salvo. So we'll do that. That hits them pretty hard. Then we're going to use the missile launch to finish off a target, or I guess we could actually do a target lock, and then a missile launch and kill a target. That would be fine. And as long as we do a round of shields, they shouldn't be able to do much. Though they're actually going to be applying their own shields this turn, so they're not hitting me. I have to now hit them extra hard. That's fine. We'll go ahead and just use a couple more missiles like so, and they're down. Let's take out the asteroid and then move to the exit, and we should be good to go. Boom, encounter complete. We gathered up some supplies, and we also got some rewards here. Of course, we get a card pack. What do we want? Volatile payload. All missile launch cards deal three damage to units adjacent if a target is destroyed. That could be interesting. Fire and maneuver for every two attack cards played in a turn. We lose some heat. Would allow us to move quite often. And then barrier matrix again if we want to get an overshield. Hmm. I think I'm going to take the fire and maneuver because that will definitely be useful. Now we also get an artifact reward pack. Make a skill card. Give five shield to yourself. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, if we head back down to the card menu like so, we can go to the upgrading menu. And this is the only artifact I have available, so we will select it. I can now choose to apply this to any of these other cards, and that's going to gain us some sort of a benefit. So if we want to have, for example, a really good shield card, we could do that. So I'll go ahead and install it. And now if we take a look at our deck, we should find... There it is. If we use this here, we would be able to get a lot of extra shields. Okay, we buffed this thing up. Something else you can do is recycle a card every three turns. So if we want to thin out the deck and get rid of, let's say, a regular shield, we can get rid of this, increasing the odds that we're going to draw more valuable cards later on, exactly like Slay the Spire. 
Let's go ahead and move on to a communications transmission over here. I want to find out what we've got available. All right, so we are receiving data from other colony ships that allow us to improve our crew. This is where we can then upgrade some of our crew members with some different power-ups. So, for example, the science officer, every four turns, we get extra energy. Or the chief engineer can boost up our maximum shield. The gunnery officer, every two attack cards played this turn, gained five shield. I could see that being fantastic. When you exhaust or manually discard a card, gain some shields. Or at the start of the encounter, gain an emergency heat vent with purge in my deck. I'm going to go ahead and go for the attack cards, can give us some extra shields. And also, crew morale does go up once again. Let's go ahead and move on to the next encounter. You can imagine by the end of this, you do have to fight a boss, which could be fun. All right, this area of the map is fogged. We know there are enemies. We have a rough idea where they are, but we aren't absolutely positive. So planning out your moves gets to be just a little bit more difficult. Weird, and we also have volatile asteroids. Destroy them deals extra damage to adjacent units. Interesting. So we need to be careful not to get too close to some of these asteroids or preemptively get rid of them before we take damage. Well, I'm going to go ahead and blow this one up. Let's see how that works. All right, so that did injure this asteroid but did not destroy it. That said, we are in the blast radius if something were to happen. Our enemy is up over here. We can probably move one more forward, maybe even two, and be fine. I'm going to go ahead and apply some shields. And there's really nothing else for me to do, so let's go ahead and end the turn. I don't want to use up all my heat, just in case. All right, they did take a shot at me, so it's a good thing that I had a shield available. Uh, we can go ahead and do fire and maneuver. Spend some of our energy now in order to give ourselves that extra bonus. That could be fine. Gain some heat. Next attack card played is placed twice. Interesting. Well, let's go ahead and do battlefield analysis. I'm uh, searching for something we can use. Let us get rid of the shield card, believe it or not, because what I'm going to do is now barrage, move just a little closer, and, ooh, actually this isn't going to work the way I thought it was going to because they have a shield. Shoot, we're probably going to take some damage. I should not have gotten rid of the shield, but all right. So we did two missile barrages there. All right, so I didn't get to vent heat. That didn't work out quite the way I expected it to, but it's fine, and they decided to go ahead and boost up their own shields instead of anything else. Fair enough. Uh, we could go for serrated rounds, which would probably allow me to kill this target because we need to do six damage. So let's use this to boost ourselves up for our next fight, and then Captain's Orders is going to destroy this, and we got the extra value out of the combo, so I get one energy back, and I'm going to go ahead and vent some heat so I can move as of next turn. This enemy gets closer and does do some damage to our, I thought to our hull, but apparently not yet. Uh, that's fine. Let's go ahead and apply Vulnerable. And then Missile Launch. And Missile Launch again. And there we go. That target is down. I'm going to go ahead and start moving forward like so. Let's apply a shield in case. Enemies can still spawn on the map even after you finish all of them. So don't... Not like Exactly like that. So don't think that all of a sudden we're completely in the clear. We might not be. Uh, let's go ahead and use the barrage in order to hit twice here. You should be down, and then we'll go ahead and try to move a little bit. I'm going to try to fish for that vent card. We did not get it. All right, not much else we can do except for apply a couple shields just in case something were to happen. There are enemies over here. Okay, these guys are kamikaze and explode. And if they do enough damage and take out some of these asteroids, we could find ourselves in a lot of trouble. Let's go ahead and vent some of this heat. I may need to take down some of these asteroids just to clear a path. So let's move forward like so. I'm going to go ahead and do a barrage here that takes out more asteroids. And then we're going to try to book it toward the exit and hopefully these guys can't get close to me. Again, I'm going to fish. No, we did not get the vent heat card. That's fine. We'll apply a little shields. There we go. We are keeping all of our shields behind, by the way. We had like 14 for a brief moment, and now it's all gone. But it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to go ahead and... Ooh, I need to get rid of that heat. I have no way of getting rid of that heat. Well, darn. That is a problem, isn't it? Okay, hang on. Um, we can, again, apply a target lock. No, I cannot. Okay, hang on. We can apply a shield. I do not have range on this character, apparently. This is going to get awkward. I'm not going to be able to do much of anything this turn. We could do a defensive salvo 
That would get me some shield, but I'll lose some. That said, I still walk away with more shield than I lose, I think. And that's going to be good enough. Now we can start attacking this uh, target. There we go. And we are in the clear. All right. These guys are getting close. And they hit me. All right. But we have the shields. We're good to go. Let's move. Encounter complete. And we're good to go. Reward pack. Executioner missile launch. If the target is below 50% health, deal 6 damage. If you destroy the target, gain 2 energy back. A phenomenal finishing move. The next attack or skill card can be played twice. Or an exhausting card. Attack cards cost 0 energy this turn. And for every attack card played, gain overheat. I'm going to take the Executioner Missile. Let's also take a look at our artifact. We get uh, an extra range for one of our attack cards. This is fantastic. What we're going to do is we're going to pop back over here to our cards. We're going to upgrade the close range one, this one. So instead of a range of one, it has a range of two. We'll gain shields, but this is now a very close range phenomenal AoE attack. That seems solid. All right. Where we want to go next? Well, we have only one choice, and that is to go for a transmission. This should be another opportunity to boost up our crew in some way. So, what do we want to get this time? Max out the shields for every three attack cards, gain an energy. If you exhaust, blah, 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 or discard, gain some shields. This would mean that my draw and discard suddenly becomes pretty useful to me. I mean, it was already pretty good, but this becomes even more useful. I think we'll go ahead and take shield flow. That should be okay. All right. So, that character's now been leveled up. Let's go ahead and move to a salvage opportunity. This is going to give us something new. It looks like we found an enemy wreckage. Or maybe one of our own wreckages, I'm not sure. We could heal ourselves, but I don't need to worry about that. Let's salvage for some parts. We can now choose our salvage. Do we want to craft ourselves another one of these shield generator artifacts? Or go for another pearl artifact? Or kinetic redistributor card type. Every time you gain shield, draw a card. That could actually be really good. Huh. I think I'll take this. Let's get the Kinetic Redistributor. And what this means now is we can actually craft something. We'll go down here to crafting. And this is going to take some supplies. So we have supplies here and rations, uncommon crafting materials, and eventually water, a rare crafting material. You can use these to make cards or artifacts or some other things you find, recipes that you are going to find. Let's go ahead and craft this thing. Uses up those resources, that's fine, and now that's been added to my deck. We're going to jump back into another encounter. That's our only option regardless, so it doesn't matter too much where I go. Volatile reactor cores destroying an enemy unit is going to do extra damage to adjacent units. Interesting. So we do not want to run too close to a position where if we blow up all these guys simultaneously and create a train reaction, we get ourselves killed. That would be a problem. This is a very good opportunity, though, to go ahead and pick up things like serrated rounds, kinetic redistributor, like so. And then we can move, I don't know, let's see, how far forward are you going to move? You're going to move over there. Let's move maybe two spaces here. Actually, we have to move further forward. I re just realized we're going to be having a contaminated zone following behind us. That's what this is going to represent. So we actually have to keep moving forward. This is a weird particular encounter. There's also a Lusk Hive over here that will continue spawning units. So this one's actually a race. We need to find a way to get out of here as quickly as we can. Um, all right. If I move one more forward, they'll probably change direction and come and attack me. So, I'm a little worried about that. Let's move over here instead, and we're going to lose some heat. And we're going to end our turn. They do come closer, and this one does attack me. Oh, well, but I had a tiny bit of shield available, so it's not a big deal. And you can see that this area now is contaminated. If we end our turn on one of these tiles, we gain something called contamination. I don't remember exactly what that does. I just can't imagine that it's going to be good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use Captain's Orders here to hit you pretty hard. And then a Missile Launch. Followed by Battlefield Analysis so we can discard a card to gain a free shield. We don't need the Executioner Missile Launch right now, so we'll get rid of that. And then, let's see, if you guys move forward, they're going to be doing 4 damage, 4 damage. We've got enough shield, we're actually okay right now. So what I'm going to do is move you here. Eh... Uh, Kind of acting like it's going to knock down all my shield. I think I'm going to go ahead and apply a target lock, and hopefully that was the right call. Do my 14 shields still last here? Yeah, they take damage there. They take damage there. We're all right. Okay, everything was fine. So there's the execution and missile uh, option here, but none of these guys are injured enough where that makes sense. So again, we're going to do Captain's Orders, and with the vulnerability, they go right on down. 
we are going to do some solid damage to you. Take you down, which actually destroys an asteroid as well, which is fun. You're going to move forward and be able to do damage to me, but I should be able to handle that, so no issues there. I guess I could just gain some extra shield, but it doesn't really matter. And battlefield analysis, I'm going to try to get the vent card. I did not see it. Okay, so we did not get the opportunity to vent some heat. That is unfortunate, but okay. They take another shot at me. All right, all right, all right. There's the vent heat. Um, let's go for captain's orders again. Then we're going to do another missile launch. Then we're going to vent some heat. And we're going to move forward another couple of spaces. It's getting a little bit close and risky, isn't it? It's getting a little scary. Uh, let's go ahead and... If I do this and destroy the asteroid, are we okay? Do I want to destroy the asteroid, or do I want to move in a position to try and take you out? I don't know if I have enough heat to do that. I think we have to take out the asteroid, so let's do that. Followed by a target lock on you. Followed by a barrage and missile launch to kill you, since we get to use it twice. And then we try to move forward, but I don't have enough energy to get out of this, so now the contamination is going to catch up to us, and we didn't get enough venting to escape it. More enemies coming in. Lovely. Let's go ahead and vent some of that heat. We could try to destroy the Lusk Hive. I just don't think that it's really worth it at the end of the day. So let's target lock on you. Let's do some shields up. Let's move forward as far as we are able. And we'll try to hit you with a missile, but I don't expect it to matter. Actually, should have taken out the asteroid. Didn't think about that, but that's okay. We're kind of good. Uh, can I maybe get the vent again? No. Tell you what I will do, though, is I will... Get rid of Captain's Orders. We're going to play Fire and Maneuver. And then we are going to try to shoot something to get some extra movement. It did not work. We needed to have one more attack. I ran out of energy. I did not calculate correctly. That said, we have enough shields that we are still okay. Nothing to worry about. And I should have enough heat to move forward a little bit further. Vent heat. That solves the problem. Get me the heck out of here. And we are fine. Okay. Another reward pack. Gain overcharge whenever we enter a tile. Whenever we enter a tile, that seems interesting. Okay. Overcharge applies bonus damage equal to the number of stacks. So the more we move, the more damage I do. That actually works well with one of the other powers I already have. I'm going to pick that up. That seems good. Reward pack, another attack range. Perfect. Okay. So we'll take that plus some extra supplies. And we're going to go ahead and move to our salvage opportunity over here. And this is going to get us hopefully something else we can craft that will be useful. Captain's orders, railgun shot, indirect line AOE, piercing, deals six damage. Wow, okay, so a lot of enemies lined up could take an absolute ton of damage. I could see that being good. Or a flusium capacitor, make any card cost less energy than it did otherwise. Tempting. Um, um, hmm. I feel like the railgun shot is okay. So we'll take that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to recycle one of my missiles and get rid of this so we can thin out the deck just a bit. And then we should be able to craft this, which I will do, add that into the deck. Then we can go for an upgrade. The question is, what do I want to upgrade? I don't think you can upgrade cards twice, so we can't upgrade the AoE one more time. We could try to upgrade one of these missiles so it actually has three range like everything else. Or we could try to boost up something like the missile launch or the captain's orders. I'm going to boost up captain's orders to make it more likely that we have a chance to use this at a safe range. I don't know if that's the right call, but it's kind of what I'm going with. Now we're going into the boss fight. All right, so the boss up over here has several hard points. These seeker turrets are going to be either spawning enemies or shooting at us. We can destroy them, but they'll repair eventually. You have to knock out at least one of them to access the core and start doing damage to the boss. And the boss has 60 HP, so you can imagine this is gonna get a little bit difficult all of a sudden. Let's go ahead and start by moving probably a bit forward like so. We could apply a target lock. No, I can't. We have an asteroid in the way, and I probably want to keep it that way. Let's go for some battlefield analysis, see if there's anything we can draw that would make a big difference. I don't see anything. We can get rid of the defensive salvo. I can't use that in this range anyway. I think I'm just going to end my turn here behind the asteroid where it's safe. 
I say safe, holy crud, they just spawned a lot of these little guys who are going to come and try to explode on me. Okay, let's go for fire and maneuver here, just so I can have the card available. And if I were to move, let's say, one over, we could try destroying you. Yeah, but I only got two energy. Can't do any damage there. I'm trying to think if there's a way that this works. Yes, if I can destroy this guy, he's not going to get to do any damage, so I don't need to worry about shields. Let's just take you down. And you're out, but of course I get one energy back. I guess I could do some shields just for good measure, but let's go ahead and end our turn. Okay, you can see this thing's about to fire in a long range, so we do need to move the heck out of here. Uh, the kinetic redistributor would be good. Let's go ahead and pick this up, just so it's active. We can do the lightning drive as well, and I will. Then we're going to move two tiles like so. We're going to do a missile launch for five damage, because moving is good all of a sudden. And let's go ahead and vent some heat so I'm able to move next time. These guys are going to hit me, though, so I'm expecting to take maybe a little damage. Let's see. Boom. And boom. So they've contaminated the zone. I have taken some damage, but, you know, it's okay. We could do serrated rounds. Every time we deal damage to a target, deal two more. I do kind of want to have this power active. Actually, do these only last for a certain number of turns? I just realized that might be the case. I didn't know that was the case. That's interesting. Uh, okay. Well. Hmm. Ah, no, I just fired my real gun. Ah, uh, no. I did not mean to deal with that. That was a complete and total blunder on my part. Okay, let's go ahead and draw for some cards and pray we find something that makes things a little bit easier. Let's get rid of the barrage at this point. No longer relevant. I'm going to move forward here. And we're going to use the defensive salvo to do six damage to everything in range in two zones. Boom! Like that. That's what I wanted. We could do it again. Get even more shields. Fun. Um, mm, well, sure. You know, Again, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to actually click and move first and then not use the card, but accidentally I had it clicked, so I clicked on myself and I just used it. All right. You know what? Let's go ahead and end the turn before I make anything worse. So we're still getting shot at, but we had enough shields that we are okay. We could do some railgun shots, but they're only going to do so much for me. I think if I move over here, I could probably do a fair bit of damage. So let's do that. Let's move here like so. I've got a fair bit of energy. I could try using barrage, but I don't think I have enough energy to use railgun shot twice. I don't think that's allowed. Pretty sure. So let's use the railgun shot like so. Okay, so that did a lot of damage because moving is still really good for me. Let's get the battlefield analysis up and running. I could actually draw Railgun Shot again. Yeah, I don't know if I need that, but yeah, it's still pretty good, right? I think it is. All right, let's go ahead and drop off the Executioner Missile. Let's go ahead and use this a second time, doing another six damage, then end the turn. Now again, these turrets are going to respawn. You can see this thing's actually going to be reappearing as of next turn, so be aware that that is still a thing. I'm going to use serrated rounds and just activate the power, and yeah, these are temporary. That is interesting and very good to know. All right. If we move any closer, this guy is going to hit me. That said, I feel like I'm missing out. Let's, let's move one, then move right back. That gets me extra damage to use with Captain's Orders, and... I can't vent heat. Darn it, I was about to say we could vent heat and it ends up being the same difference, but no, I miscalculated. All right, well, either way, we're going to do seven damage. Actually, no, we got a combo. I still can vent heat. Let's do that. There you go. All right, I'm back down to having a bit less. Should need the shields, which is why I didn't bother with the card draw. So now these things are back up and running and they have shield of their own, which is a bit annoying. We can do the rail gun, and you can see it's still going to do a ton of damage to everything in sight. Holy crud. That was amazing. All right, so we've now knocked the boss down to below half health. It seems to be in a little bit of danger. I can do defensive salvo and kill everything around me, which I will do. That's why I liked boosting up that card. I think it's really good. Uh, and it looks like we would need to move if I want to hit this guy again. Actually, I don't think we can do any more damage to it this turn. So let's go ahead and end turn here. Okay, now it's going to start trying to contaminate the area around us, which is a small issue. Um, believe it or not, the railgun shot still makes a lot of sense here. 
Let's move back to a safe spot. And honestly? Barrage? Railgun shot twice? That worked. Wow, I'm actually amazed that worked. I didn't think it would, but it did. All right, let's go ahead and get some shields. Boss is almost down. You can see they're definitely trying to contaminate the area. Uh, let's go ahead and draw some cards. There's the Executioner Missile. That's actually what I was looking for for fun. And the target lock could make things interesting too. So let's get rid of... Uh, let's get rid of she uh, Captain's Orders. I'm going to move... Well, let's, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to vent some heat. I'm going to move forward. We're going to target lock. And then I'm going to use the Executioner Missile and finish it off. Boom! Say goodbye to the boss. And that is a demo run of Earthless. So you see what I mean as far as this being very, very similar to something like Slay the Spire. It's got a lot of that feeling, but with the positioning and the tactics that go behind it, it does require a little bit more forethought and uh, planning than you probably are used to in a game like that. And the deck building mechanic actually is pretty seamless. I think it does a really good job of representing what your crew is capable of in that moment. So I think this game has a phenomenal amount of potential. Definitely something to be keeping your eye on, and I'm curious to see how this game is going to continue developing. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, I'd ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.